I, I, yeah, I switched on the recording. And in the yesterday's lecture, we started talking about IAS1, presentation of finance statement. And then uh, we discussed to a certain extent. I think we, yeah, we were here. And uh, can I get to know a little bit background information of the new person here? Hello? Yeah, hello. MAC, Mac. Am I meeting you today or you were there in the class before? Mr. Zubair, assalamu alaikum. Um, yes, uh, hi, Tam. You remember where we stopped yesterday? So, uh, we, I think uh, we will continue from this point. Under IAS-1, what IAS-1 includes is some certain Yeah, Mr. Zubair. Some certain uh, principles which are governed under IAS-1. These are some certain principles. One is that we have to make sure a fair presentation and compliance with IFRS. Now, when you produce your, when you producing your finance statement, the finance statement should be presented in a fair present, fair manner. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, it should be. It should be uh, presented in a fair basis so that. Every user is getting the right benefit. Every user is getting the right benefit of the financial statement. If it is not produced in a fair basis, then you could there could be possibility of biasness. There could be possibility of biasness, which could uh, harm the objective financial reporting. So. One of the requirements of IAS-1 is to ensure that it is presented in a fair manner. Furthermore, there is, they say like this, financial statement is fully compliant with IFRS. You have to mention, you have to state this as one uh, note in your financial statement. You should state this. Now suppose if the financial statement is deviating from any financial, uh, any IFRS, that also needed to be disclosed. What I what I'm trying to mean in case in case the company is deviating from example example huh? IFRS eight they don't comply with IFRS eight then. This fact should be disclosed. Are you are you clear with this? 
Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Haitham? Yes or no? Secondly, <clears throat> the financial statement is prepared on the valid going concern assumption. The financial statement, the the current the, the financial statement we produce is having a valid going concern. Now, what is this uh, going concern? Anyone can uh, elaborate this to me? How will you know a financial statement is, or this business is, based on valid going concern. When you're reading the, by reading the financial statement, can we figure it out the business is having a problem with going concern or the business is with a valid going concern principle? Is there any, any clue? Uh, the going concern means same for format we have to use. Uh, like if last year we have one policy, so the second year we should have the same policy. Mm, the the way you interpret that is not necessarily going concern. That we call it a separate name. Okay. Consistency. That is consistency. Yeah. I'm talking about going concern. Any any of you can help me understand this? Mr. Haitam Habibi. The way in how you know it presents. Pardon? The way in how the way how it presents. Um, I'm sorry, I couldn't uh, hear you well. Uh, I said maybe the way how it presents. Okay, what you're saying is the way we present. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. Now, brother, the, there could be deviation in the Method of presentation. There could be deviation in the method of presentation. But cannot confirm that they have issue with Going concern that they have issue with, you cannot confirm that they have issue with going concern. Now, uh, example depreciation you present using state line method, but if you change it to reducing balance method. For the last three years, you follow state line method. Suddenly, this year, you are changing to reduce imbalance method. Again, this also changes in the way you present. You agree with me, Mr. Haitam? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then I, yeah. I was explaining the same thing, but a different way. So you are you explained very well now. Hmm. So yeah, now I got it. But. This is not what we try to mean regarding going concern. 
in simple terms the meaning of the word going concern is that how sure the business will have continuity how sure the business will have continuity let's say now i open a business on 1 january 2020 and at the time i open the business normal intention of mine what do you think my intention is to close the business next month no right what i want is i want to continue the business for a very long future period sa wallala you're talking about the uh, continuity principle that's that's i think it's correct yeah. that exactly this is what going concern is so if you know that the business will continue the business will continue a period exceeding 12 months a period exceeding 12 months then you see in this business i have two assets i have receivable 100 and i have motor vehicle 1300 so what are my total assets now how much is the total assets 1400 1400 but how i classify this asset current asset this is current but what about this fixed assets yeah we have a different name right no yeah. yeah. on current asset no how when i define non current asset what i told you all that assets will last for a period exceeding how long 12 months 12 months so in a normal situation when you see a financial statement that they classify the assets as to current and non current you could easily make a make a conclusion that this business is not having problem with going concern if you think the business will struggle and they will close in 3 months time could you classify any asset as non current asset no can i do that sorry when 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 i understand i am closing the shutting down the business in 3 months time but in my books i have a motor vehicle normally the nature of a motor vehicle is a non current asset but for my business when i am going to close it in 3 months is there any point of keeping that as non current asset yeah if you have non current asset yeah regardless that's what you you have a current non current asset in your in your in your custody but you going to close the business in 3 months mm. so then could you classify that particular motor vehicle as a non current asset for your business but do you think get exact yeah. you didn't get the message okay now when i produce a balance sheet i have non current asset 
motor vehicle, 1,200. And I have parenthesis, receivable, 300. So this is the total, 1,500 I have. Yeah. Now, when we discussed about how to define the assets, we said that any assets whose life is greater than 12 months, we classify as what? Yeah, it will 12 months. Mm -hmm. uh, I appreciate this. If the, if the assets life will exceed 12 months, we classify them as non current. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Right. yeah. Yes. Let's say this date is 31st December 2022. But now you receive a court order. The company should be closed on 1st April 23. So now you preparing a financial statement, having very well known that on 1 April you will close the business. So from 31 December 2022 to 1st April 23, how long uh, the time period is? Long period financial statement. No, I, I you didn't you, you didn't you didn't get my question. My question is from 31 December 2022 to 1st April 23. How long? Yeah, it's it's uh, three months. Very good. It's three yeah. months. Yeah. Three months is greater than one year or less than one year? No, three months is less than uh, one year. Less than one year. So, yeah. based on our definition criteria of non current asset, the, what should that meet? The, that asset should be with us. How long? One year. One year. But in this situation, this motor vehicle, will it be with me for one year? Since it's identified, no. we can consider Three the months. current asset. Pardon? Yes, yeah, it's the uh, item, right? Yeah. Since it's identified, can be considered as a current asset? Definitely. That's what I want to say. Yeah. So what you need yes. to do is, you so have to, to reclassify this to current asset. Current asset. It's so, so it's liquidation. liquidation. If it's liquidate, liquidate, liquidating. Yeah. As per the due to some uh, legal regulations. Some court case, some voluntary reasons for any any issue, or you decide, or you know, the owners are traveling out of the country for any given reason. You gonna shut down the business for a period less than twelve months then you cannot keep any non-current assets in your books. Are you very clear with this? Okay. Got it. Fine. Now, what about then, uh, what about the other side of it? Liability side. Liability you have side. a non-current non liability. You have bank loan. Yes, this is what I want to say, actually, because this is the... Uh... The same example, but we have a loan. Same and, situation. Yes, yeah, same situation. Now, if the bank will get to know that you're going to shut down the business in three months, would they be sleeping in their bank? Sorry? Again, if I the bank know. will get to know that you are shutting down your business in three months and the, you already have a loan with the bank, and the agreement is they give you four years' time. They will be classified. But now, what is the situation? So, we have uh, this long term will be converted to short term. Very good. This needs to, to be reclassified to short term. Yeah. Current so, term. meaning current liability. So, your bank loan will be reclassified here. So, this is you have to review and find out whether the company is uh, in uh, uh, on a continuity continuity assumption is valid or not. If the continuity assumption is valid, no problem. Con just prepare the financial as it is. But if the continuity assumption is not valid, then you have to reclassify the financial statement. Now, what are the indicators? 
How we know the business is struggling or the business is having going concern? What are the indicators? Uh, their procedures as we... See, check. one example. Yeah. One example is continuous losses. Mm. If the business is continuously incurring losses, what is the point of running the business? Okay. Correct? Correct, correct. So that is one example. Second example. Appreciation. Continuous cash difficulty. You know there is a saying clean suit empty pocket? Uh, sorry? There is a saying clean suit empty pocket. Yeah. You will see this man very clean, tightly wear the, the suit and dress and everything. But every time, you he won't have one real in his pocket. Mm. So, in the business, if you experience a continuous cash difficulty, and that's also one symptom, one indicator that the company is facing a going concern issue, other other mm. reason also uh, maybe lawsuit sometimes you know they uh, you know by by uh, um, you know lawsuit and they they decided to to close this you know entity for example yeah, yeah, yeah. very important reason lawsuit this is what you're telling me right yes 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 <laughs> this is one of the <laughs> serious reasons. Sorry, I had to bring some water. Yeah, yeah, no issue, no issue. So, the lawsuit court voluntarily liquidated the company. It's a mandatory, mandatory order. Yes. There are other reasons also. What about lots? Reputational damage. I think last time you given some example, if some good brand is having uh, bad customer service and there is a reputation Yes. Yeah. So we talked about now we talked about um, the body body uh, body shop. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, another another realistic example. Uh, in the Middle East, you know this company. Uh, you know this company who sells. Cook cheese. Cook cheese. One of the yeah. famous Danish company. Same Denmark like company. Indo Indonomy, Indonomy. They got oh. uh, some, I think, issue and after that their 
sale went down. Yeah, uh, you. I hope all of you know the reason. Yeah, yeah. In, in Denmark, they started uh, publicizing some cartoons against uh, Prophet Muhammad. Mm. And then that created a huge uh, business problem to uh, the, uh, the company owned by Puktis in Middle East. All the, all the supermarkets have been ordered to unsell. Mm. Unsell all the display. So, this, these are what I'm trying to mean. Uh, reputational uh, damage. A reputational damage can kill the business at no time. No matter no matter how good and best you are, if you are uh, if you are creating a social unrest, you are creating a social unrest. Then this will lead into. Uh, you know, shutting down the business. And that will also lead to going concern issue. Understand? Yes, clear. And what about? Thank you, Rapsi. Anj. What about? Key personnel. In, a, in, a, in the company, the CEO of the company designs and that goes public and if the CEO designs and if that goes public and the trust the customer's head or the stakeholder's head with the company could also will be questioned understand me yes yes clear is it you know uh, accordingly this main is also main result yeah, this is it. Okay. Bankruptcy yeah, as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I said bankruptcy as well. But, you know, loss of key, you know, personal. Uh, when so it comes to the personal. CEO. Yeah. Um, the owner, you mean? I don't know. Uh, not the owner. Like, uh, let's say, company have a, a CEO. Okay. CEO of the company may not necessarily should be the owner of the company. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So this person is the one who is running the show. And if suddenly uh, they develop a dispute between him and the owner and this man decides the company. Okay. What do you think? What will happen? Well, uh, yeah, there will be losses, you know, uh, in in there, let's say, for example, a, there will be a you know the trust. The yeah, the trust, the losses. Yes. Um, financial it. losses, there will uh, definitely hmm. will happen. And if the yeah. financial losses are very significant, then that yes. will uh, lead into a question of going concern. Exactly. You have also another example, you know, bankruptcy. Yeah, I'm coming to one by one. Yeah, okay. One second, I'm writing in a... Bankruptcy. Bankruptcy uh, is, a, is a total loss. You have no nothing to do, you got to close the business, then automatically the going concern is there's no more going concern. You know, in Sri Lanka, I think it is applicable in UK also. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. You can go to court. Sorry you to interrupt. You can go but... to court. Pardon? Yeah, sorry to interrupt, but your voice becomes, you know, unclear, so. Can you hear me now? Yes, much better. Okay. Now, uh, in Sri Lanka, or oh, in UK, You can go to court and apply for bankruptcy. You can apply for 
bankruptcy. And the court can decide an order. Okay, this company cannot run anymore and accordingly we will close this. Or you can close it. But the problem is, court will also give you some condition. One of the conditions is that the person cannot travel in the car uh, in the back seat. The person cannot travel in the uh, back seat of the car. You know, in the car. I know, no. What, what is the reason? A very funny, very funny yeah. law, this one. Yeah. On the back side, you have two seats, right? Right hand side and left hand side. Okay. The left hand side seat on the back seat considered to be executive seat. Okay. And if you are a person who received a court order for a bankruptcy, you are not allowed to sit there. Okay. And moreover, you cannot wear color dress. You should wear white and white. White and what, sorry? White and white. Ah, oh, okay. These are some old law prevailing in Sri Lanka and uh, in, uh, for certain extent, in UK as well. So anyway, bankruptcy is one. And what about economic unrest? Now, if you remember, you know, the uh, financial crisis. crisis in U.S. You remember this? Yes, 2008. Seemed like when COVID came, the economy fell down. 2008. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. COVID is a recent one. I'm not talking about the COVID. I'm talking about something in the past. So, 2008, 2009, the Middle East, we, we suffered a huge problem financially. You all remember? Not that much, but in Saudi. Uh... There is a bank called Lehman Brothers. The Lehman Brothers were uh, considered to be one of the leading banks in the world. And they became. Uh, they went on to bankrupt. Because of they went to bankruptcy, all the customers who were having deposit, they also struggled. The people from that bank, the, the customers from this bank are not considered to be all other banks. So every bank suffered a loss. Accordingly, Middle East, lot of business struggled. So economic unrest can also create a problem to going concern. Clear? Yes or no? Yes, 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 clear. Okay. And also, not to forget, natural disaster. Like you told me, Corona or Tsunami. So that can wipe off the business portal. So then uh, it will be a, another big issue. Yes, uh, yes so these uh, are... sorry. there was internet disconnection by by from whose side? I think two minutes ago. Bankruptcy. Yeah. I just see only bankruptcy. After that, uh, it was not clear to me. Oh, okay. I will repeat. 
we talked about uh, one of the uh, recent uh, reason for a uh, going concern issue yeah. is mr uh, mr haitham correctly pointed to me that is bankruptcy and the bankruptcy can uh, take place uh, voluntarily where the business owners can go to courts and then they can request for uh, order for bankruptcy and then accordingly the going concern will be as a show so that's exactly uh, what one of the one of the reason for going concern issue and then we have economic unrest meaning economic problems inflation issue uh, financial crisis so on so that is also can can lead to a scenario for bankruptcy Yeah, no, got it. Yeah. Is it clear now, Mr. Zubel? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then, natural disaster. The natural disaster also, one uh, possible reason for going concern. Now, uh, like, you know, we had tsunami. We had corona. And time to time we have earthquake, etc. So all this will create huge shackles to the business. And some business will be fully wiped off. Some business will be fully wiped off. So that is another possibility for going concern issue. We could keep on discussing about that. Is that is that clear for all of you now? Yes, yes, it's clear. Now we also IAS one says that your financial statement you should prepare on the on the accrual basis. All your financial statements should be based on. Actually, when you talk about how you prepare a finance statement, method of preparing finance statement, there are two methods. One is cash basis. Other one is accrual basis. IAS1 says you should prepare the financial statement based on accrual basis. What is this accrual concept? All transaction should be recorded when incurred or realized not when paid or yes. there is no relationship of the cash flow for you to do the transaction based on accrual basis is that clear clear yes yes clear then materiality and aggregation an item will be material when the omission or misrepresentation 
of the same will result result into a change in the economic decision of the users of financial statement. Is that clear? You all understood what the sentence I wrote here? Yeah. Now let's say, to make you understand, I have one financial statement. And I deliberately, I deliberately add one information which I did not share to the users. And then I gave this financial statement to the user to read. And I requested them to make a decision. After they made the decision, I record the decision. I record the decision. So what I did, I produced one financial statement. I have deliberately had one additional piece of in, in information into the financial statement, which I kept secret to the user. And I asked them, please read it and make your decision. And after they made the decision, I record the same. Now what I do, I take the financial statement back. Then again, I prepare the financial statement. Now with this, now that piece of information, I removed. But I did. I removed that particular piece of information. And then I have given this to users. Now again, what I do, I record the decision. Now, if you will compare decision number one and decision number two, and if there is any significant difference between these two decisions, then this item is Material. You understand what the context I'm saying? Yes, yes, clear. So that should be very clearly understood. So how I decide anything is material, it is based on the outcome of the user's decision. The outcome of the user's decision will be a significant call on that. Okay? Yes, clear. So, when the item is material, if yeah. the item is material, this can be presented separately in the financial statement. The, if the item is material, and this item can be presented separately in the financial statement. But otherwise, now also we talk about aggregation. Immaterial immaterial uh, items which are similar 
in nature should be or oh, not should be sorry can be clear is that understood Yes, yes. Immaterial items which are similar in nature can be aggregated. Now, if you in the let's say for example, it's the miscellaneous expense. Hmm. What we do is in the in, the, in our income statement, uh, under administration expense, you will find one line item called miscellaneous expense. But then every single bits and pieces of expense you will drop it under this. Yeah. So that is exactly what this is saying. When you identify things are material, you got to separately disclose it. But if the items are immaterial and similar in nature, which you can aggregate. Now, another subject is offsetting. What do you mean by offsetting, for example? A, 100, B, 75. So what is the next answer here? The screen is stable. I, I can, there is a general feature. I did not see the... You don't see the screen? No. No, it's uh, not visible for me. Is it visible now? Yeah, now uh, it's uh, you are this. Yeah, now visible, visible. Okay. Question. Now we're talking about offsetting. C, A, 100 plus, B, 75 minus. So net answer is how much? 25. 25. Now, what, this is what exactly offsetting means, literally. But IS1 says, IS1, presentation of financials. Yeah, offsetting. Is normally not allowed unless any other standard requires the same. Or it carries similar nature. You can't, let's say, um, you have a sale, mm. one million, and you have to pay commission. 150. So if you try to do like this, in your income statement, you saw net sales 850. Mm. This is what they are saying is not allowed. You should show the gross sales and then you should show the commission separately as one expense. Understood. Like, yeah, same like hmm? other income we have to make separately. Yeah. Yes. So IAS1 specifically discuss about this. Hmm. IAS1 also talks about frequency of reporting. How often you should report your financial statement. Normally hmm. Every 
12 months. Normally, every 12 months, we should report our financial statement to the uh, shareholders or users or your stakeholders. Except when any special need arises. Example uh, for listed public companies or quoted public companies, QPC. And uh, let's say this company is registered in US. Then that is regulated by SEC, Securities and Exchange Commission. If any company in Qatar, that is regulated by QE, that is uh, Qatar Exchange. So, one of the requirements of them is to produce financial, uh, they call it interim. Financial statement. Interim financial statement is a financial statement for a period less than 12 months. And it could be one month or two months or three months or six months or anything. Understood? Yeah. So that is uh, what you call uh, frequency of reporting and comparative information. You should produce financial statement with the similar information for the previous year. And your financial statement for the current year should match and should be consistent with the financial information for the last year. Current. Financial information should be consistent with the previous year financial information. Is it clear? Yeah. So you should present last year finance information and the current year. So you should be able to compare. But one condition should be able to compare like with like or apple with apple. So that is also another requirement. Finally, consistency of presentation. The Presentation of financial information should be consistently presented. It should be consistently presented. You should do whatever the policies you are following. Now, one good example, we again talk about depreciation method. Last year, you follow the straight line method, year one. And when you go to year two, also should be straight line method. Clear? Yes, clear. Yes. So, fair presentation and compliance. Financial statements shall present fairly 
the financial position, financial performance, and cash flows of an entity. You should present the financial position, financial performance, and cash flows of an entity. Faithful representation on, of the effects of transaction, other events, and conditions in accordance with higher price, with additional disclosure when necessary. When you talk about this, I hope you all remember we discussed about three things. Yeah, yeah. Completeness. That is one thing. True and fair view. And then biasless. So you got to you got to ensure you are producing the financial statement in these characteristics. Clear? Yes. I, I discussed about going concern very in very detail. So I'll just go through this. When preparing financial statement, management shall make an assessment of an entity's ability to continue as a going concern. Entity's ability to continue yeah, as a going concern. Even it is Prepare, clause, I think. Pardon? Yeah, even the auditor is sending a letter which is written that you are following the going concern and these points. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's one of the very, very essential uh, elements yeah, of the financial reporting. Yeah, yeah. So, prepare financial statement on the going concern basis unless management either intends to liquidate the entity or proceeds the trading or has no realistic alternative but to do so. So, you got to prepare the financial statement on a going concern basis unless management either intends to liquidate. So, Kalas, Marshi Shaitani. We have to close it. No other use, no other alternative. I'm going to close it. Or cease trading. Meaning, if I have like uh, 10 activities, I'm uh, closing three activities. Finally, and you had left with no other option but to close the business. So in all these situations, you have to revise your financial statement and reclassify all your non-current assets as current assets and all your non-current liability as current liability. Accrual basis of accounting. And an entity shall prepare its financial statements except for cash flow information. Cash flow information you have nothing to do but to prepare based on cash basis. And all others, your balance sheet, your income statement, you should prepare based on Accrual basis of accounting. Material in aggregation. An entity shall present separately each material class of similar item. An entity shall present separately items of a dissimilar nature or function unless they are made material. An entity need to provide a specific disclosure required by a CFRS if information is not material. Offsetting. An entity shall not uh, offset assets and liabilities or income and expenses unless required or permitted by. I hope you now understand what I, what I told you all. By an IFR. Frequency of reporting. An entity shall present a complete set of financial statements, including comparative information, at least annually. When entity changes the end of its reporting period, and presence finance statement for a period longer or shorter than one year, an entity shall disclose. If you happen to prepare a financial statement not in, uh, one year, either more than one year or less than one year, then you should give a disclosure with regard to the reason for longer or shorter period and the fact that amounts presented in the financial statements are not entirely comparable. See what will happen? You will have uh, 
let's say you have 2021 and 2022. This is 12 months and this is 14 months. Can you compare this? What do you think? Mr. Haitam, what do you think? Yes, yes, with you. Yeah, can we compare if we uh, have 12, 14 months and 12 months financial statement? No, no, we cannot. We, can't we compare. cannot compare. So, entity shall disclose comparative information in respect of the previous period for all amounts reported in the current period's financial statement, obviously. You, how, you got to disclose the comparative information when you are reporting the current period, except when IFRS permit or require otherwise. So if there are any other IFRS, like IAS 8 or IAS 7 or IAS 15 or whatever, and if they say that you don't need to do this, then it's fine. Entity changes the presentation or classification of item in its financial statement. The entity shall reclassify comparative amount. Consistency of presentation. An entity shall retain the presentation and classification of items in the financial statement from one period to the next. Please note that I'm just reading it because I had done the discussion just before. All right. No problem. no problem. And if you have a doubt, feel free to ask me a question. Okay. Yes. Yes, Mr. Mr. Zubay, it's clear for you? Yes, sir. Yeah. And Mr. Haitam? Yeah. Y yes, yes. All right. Clear. Yeah. So, Bathroom. It is apparent that another presentation or classification would, would be more appropriate. Or another IFRS requires a change in presentation. Statement of financial position, at minimum, the statement of financial position shall include the lines that uh, present the following amount. I hope these are examples. I hope all of you know property plant and equipment. In, in our property plant and equipment, later we will discuss IAS 16. Investment property, IAS 40. Intangible assets, IAS 38. Financial assets, IAS 32, 39, IFRS 7 and 9. Investment accounted for using equity method that we will study under consolidation. This is IAS 28, associate. Biological assets, the accounting for agriculture, IAS 41, the inventories, IAS 2, trade and other receivables and cash and cash equivalents, IAS 7. So we will discuss all of these standards on our journey. Clear? Yeah. Yes. What was it by? Okay, so this is another standard. IFRS 5. Trade and other payable, we will uh, disclose in the financial statement. Provisions, IAS 37. IAS 37. IAS 37, provision. Financial liability again, IAS 32, 39, IFRS 7 and 9. Liabilities and assets for current tax, IAS 12, deferred tax liabilities and deferred tax assets, again, IAS 12, should capital and reserves attributable to or owners of the plant, so that is equity. An entity shall present current and non-current assets and current and non-current liabilities as separate classification in its statement of financial that we discussed. All the assets should be classified as Correct? Yes, yes. And all your liabilities also classified as current and non-current, except when the presentation based on liquidity provides information, then an entity shall present all assets and liabilities 
in order of liquidity. But they are saying is, if you find out a different presentation method is much better and useful, then you go to that. And even the liquidity basis also one acceptable method. Statement of comprehensive income. An entity shall present all items of income and expense recognized in a period. Now, see, you have your statement of comprehensive income, and this has two sections here, PNL, and here, other expenses. Comprehensive income. expenses. And we will present that in a single comprehensive income. And also, the standard allows you to show it in two different statements. But we don't do this. In two statements, a statement displaying components of a profit or loss. And the second statement beginning with profit or loss and displaying components of other comprehensive income. And what are the items you will see in income statement? Revenue, finance cost, share of profit or loss of associates and other joint ventures. X expense, profit or loss, meaning the net profit or loss. Component of other companies become specified by nature. You will specify that by nature. Example, revaluation surplus. Share of the other companies income of associates and joint ventures. You can also bring that. And then you finally have total income. Comprehensive income. So, note, you remember I discussed with you all a financial five statement. Five component. Yes. Yeah. And the fifth component is? Notes. Notes. The notes shall include present information about the basis of preparation of the financial statement and the specific accounting policies. You will talk about accounting policies and the uh, what is the current way of preparing financial. And also you disclose the information required by the IFRS. That is not presented elsewhere in the financial statement. Provide information that is not presented elsewhere in the financial statement, but is relevant to an understanding of any item. So these information you will present as notes. And then you shall, as far as practicable, present notes in a systematic manner. You have to present in that way. And it shall cross difference each item in the statement of finance operation. And of course, to any related information in the notes. Disclosure of accounting policies. So what is this? When you talk about accounting policies, you have to tell your users or shareholders what accounting policy you are using. Example, depreciation. If you choose state line method, you have to tell this to the your shareholder. When we calculate depreciation, we are following state line method. And then you shall disclose in the summary of significant accounting policies, measurement basis used in preparing the financial statement. The other Accounting policies use that are relevant to an understanding of the financial statement. With this, we are done with IAS 1. Actually, I told you yesterday I will be concluding, concluding today at 8 p.m. because I am I got a uh, what you call uh, a medical appointment. But before that. Just want to ask you, I, 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 did I share the IAS1 presentation with you? Yes, it's in the group. You all received or not? Yes, um, I see that you have sent, you know. Okay, now what I will do, I'm going to share some questions now. And we will discuss the question in our next class. Okay, it will be good if okay. we have a question so we can repeat and yeah, yeah. Before we go to the next theory or standard, 
I will discuss questions related to IAS1. Mm. Yeah. So that uh, everyone will uh, have the, in the same board with regard to the understanding of the standard. Yeah. And also told you that uh, I will not be available tomorrow as Friday is being a uh, uh, you know, family day. Uh, our next class will be on Saturday. Okay. So today we will meet at 6 30. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, okay. okay. Um, one more thing for uh, yesterday yeah. lecture, there is no recording. If you can share the yesterday. No, so there is recording. Uh, I think Jean will share. Okay, okay. Because yesterday and today is pending the lecture. Yeah, Was, today is just now we are finishing. Okay. And yesterday uh, I also had to receive it. And she will share, hopefully, inshallah. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. No, no, thank you, sir. Thank you.